Well, it's that wonderful time of the year again when you need to find the perfect gift for that friend or family member that loves to make things. And yes, it's really difficult. We are a nightmare to buy stuff for. However, there are heaps of interesting things you can buy for makers that aren't just worthless throwaway gifts like another novelty t-shirt or a book they're never going to read. And this year's spread has something for everybody. Let's get started. But before we begin, I need to talk about scams. Now, inevitably this time of year, there are scams in the 3D printing space online. There'll be websites that pop up and shove ads into Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube even, that show these machines, like these printers or laser engravers or random gimmicky tools for dirt cheap prices. And that's because you're never going to get them. They're either complete outright scams where you'll, you'll pay money and get nothing, or they're often like drop shipping scams where they'll send you something. So you get like a, a shipping notification and a tracking code, but it's not what you ordered. If you order a 3D printer, you might get a tiny coil of filament. Or if you order a laser engraver, you might just get a pair of crap sunglasses. <laughs> so inevitably this time of year, they're gonna start popping up again. So just be careful, be mindful. And if it seems too good to be true, then it probably is. 3D printers, aren't super cheap yet. They're cheaper than it used to be, but they're not $20, $30, maybe in the future, but not right now. But now I'm gonna start with some things that I really enjoyed this year. And these are things that a person with a 3D printer already will benefit from. And I'm gonna start with the Hedamami headphones. So these are a DIY pair of headphones that you 3D print most of the components for, and they send you the drivers, the cables, and some of the fasters and that sort of thing. You can just buy the digital downloads and source the other components yourself, but I just recommend buying the kit with the drivers and that. And I did a full build and review of this pair of headphones. You can find the video here. Um, and they are awesome. Like no joke, they are super bass heavy, which is maybe not what you want for like nuance listening, but for gaming, I love how these sound. Um, and they're really comfortable. You can wear them for long periods of time. The project hasn't stagnated, which is actually really cool. They're working on open back versions, which will change the sound signature. And also if you change the uh, the cushioning, it changes that too and different drivers, that sort of thing. So really, really neat project, especially if someone's into like the bit of an audio file into 3D printing, definitely consider getting them a kit because they'll have a great time building and putting this thing together. Number two is a 3D printing surface and it's maybe a surface you haven't heard of for a while. Easy peelsy, <laughs> yes. I reviewed this ages ago and I've had it stuck on my Ender 3 since and that same sheet is still working wonderfully. I printed all of my Clearance Castle test models on it. As long as you get the first layer correct so you don't melt the nozzle into it, it'll last for a very long time. And I print PLA on it at 60 degrees Celsius heated and as long as it's clean, the parts just come off. And if they don't come off super fast, you just take it off and flex because it's a magnetic print surface. A really, really good company. But the thing they've done really badly, and I want them to change, is they list their prices in Hong Kong dollars. So even back at my review when I did it years ago, people said, wow, it's so expensive. That's overpriced. But the thing is, 100 Hong Kong dollars is like 12 or 13 US dollars. And they've said it in the description on their website, I've noticed, but it's really still... A little bit daunting and disconcerting to go onto a website and see that that's print surface for a hundred bucks. So yes, I know I just did a video on printing on G10 Garolite. Although I do use that on heaps of other printers, it's not as easy and forgiving to use as I find this sheet to be. So if you know someone with a 3D printer and they've got like a print surface they don't like, for example, it's glass, they put packing tape or glue on it, or it's that ultra base style glass, which I'm personally not much of a fan and having any issues, maybe consider them getting them a upgraded print surface like the Easy Peelzy. Next up is a nozzle upgrade, but um, I don't have one. It's the Bontex CHT nozzle. Unfortunately, I don't actually have one of these nozzles yet, but Stefan over at CNC Kitchen did a really detailed breakdown and test, like a really thorough test to make sure they weren't just another 3D printing gimmick because we've all seen them. Like the 3D printing space attracts all these products that promise to improve print speeds and quality, and they often turn out to be kind of crap. But this case, it's not. It's actually built on a patent tech technology from 3D Solex, and they have some Ultimaker versions as well. But this nozzle specifically for the E3D um, old style uh, hot ends, although E3D is moving to a new EK system now. Regardless of that, if you know someone with a printer that can accept this style of nozzle, and they like to print really quickly. It's a really cool nozzle to have. And then there's filament. Now I get to test a lot of filament on the channel, but this stuff from BASF 
has absolutely blown me away. I test this when I was uh, evaluating gears for my 3D printed off-road platform. It's their Ultra Fuse 3D printing filament, uh, the Pro One stuff, and it's so strong. If you print PLA and you need something structural and you need something a bit stronger than just your regular PLA Plus, definitely try picking up a roll of this uh, to test out. But if you know someone that has a 3D printer, then maybe consider getting it from them because we are notoriously cheap skates when it comes to us buying filament. We'll look for the cheapest filament possible. This is not cheap. But if you know someone who likes to 3D print practical projects, then uh, they will definitely appreciate the thought of gifting them a very, very tough 3D printing filament. Okay, next up we have some tools. Now, tools might not be the most sexy Christmas present or gift, but I really did sort of stop and have a think back to when I was starting to make stuff like 15, 16 years old, what sort of things I have used since, what sort of things I would have really benefited from back then in terms of my making journey. And we'll start with calipers. Now calipers are incredibly useful for measuring things. Um, I do just recommend digital calipers because it just has a digital readout, it uses a battery, but it lasts for a very long time, but you don't want to go too cheap with them. In terms of the quality, I do recommend something like this with an IP rating like 54 or higher, which means they're a little bit more resistant to dust and dirt and uh, moisture. But you do want an all metal pair from a fairly reputable brand. Don't go too cheap because they don't hold their uh, accuracy very long at all and also the batteries on the cheap ones tend to die really quickly because they don't technically properly turn off whereas the mid-range ones work fine you don't have to go much higher than that every maker should have one of these and if your friend or family member does not have one consider changing that this Christmas okay so this next tool is fairly simple but hugely recommended so most 3d printers come with allen keys for assembling them or doing maintenance on them which is all well and good they're cheap whatever they work but if you've ever had to put like Ikea furniture together, you know just how painful they can be to use. But luckily stuff like this exists. This is a hex driver. It's basically a screwdriver with the same profile as the Allen keys on the tip. And these are so handy for doing maintenance on 3D printers or assembling them, or even just for your own projects. Because you can just use them like a screwdriver. You don't have to fiddle with this little horrible L-shaped thing. You can get into small details and small areas and just work on stuff accurately and precisely, but they don't transfer too much torque, which in some cases is fine, but if you do need more torque, you can get something like this, which is a T-handle hex driver. And this way you can actually like just hold it like this and just really get lots of controlled precise torque into whatever you're tightening or loosening. Now you can buy these sort of things really, really cheap, but I don't really recommend that because they're often made of crap metal, they're not very hard. Um, and they're often not very precise. So that not only means they don't last very long, but they actually damage what you're tightening and loosening. They'll damage the, uh, the screw head by just stripping it very easily. So I would recommend spending a little bit more getting something like a Bontus. These are really high quality tools. Or my personal favorite is Weha. I've had this since 2008. <laughs> I had a set from then and they are still fantastic. And you can actually buy a giant set of standard like jeweler style screwdriver heads and the hex driver heads, depending on what your budget is, you can go from just a few like one-offs all the way through the whole set and they will last a lifetime. And then we have side cutters. Now, again, a lot of 3D printers come with side cutters, but they are so rubbish. They're good for maybe snipping the filament into shape, but that's about it for like electronic work or for precision work. They're just terrible. So you can spend a lot of money on side cutters. If you want to treat that person to a pair that will last them a lifetime, you can consider getting them a pair like this. These are Lindstrom flush cutters. They are purely for delicate electronic work. They have a rating on them. If you use these to cut piano wire and abuse them, they'll go dull and break just like every other pair of side cutters. But if you use these as they're designed to be used, they will last a lifetime. I've had this pair since 2008 and it's still fantastic. I treat it well and it's treated me well back. So if you wanna treat someone to a set of tools that will last them a lifetime and they'll always think of you when they use them, maybe consider getting them a nice pair of Lindstrom side cutters or a nice set of hex drivers. Okay, so enough practical stuff. What's something that I would recommend that's really fun and something that a maker could have a blast with. Well, I came across this this year. This is a remote control tank. You can buy it on websites like Banggood and AliExpress and probably even Amazon. It's the E-Machine EAT-06 and it's a blast. It is so much fun. It's like ready to run out of the box. You just add a few batteries into the remote. It's already uh, connected up, synced up. It's really loud, <laughs> not super fast. 
but really, really powerful. And what's really cool about it is I've already ripped one of these apart. There's a lot of room for upgrades and mods. So the battery it comes with, for example, isn't fantastic. A lot of room to put a lithium polymer battery in there. There's a lot of space to upgrade things. You could add like a camera in there for like FPV vision and they're not very expensive. So, oh yeah, a lot of people will get remote control cars for Christmas and that sort of thing, but this, this is a step above that. This is gonna last a while. It's almost bulletproof. I've taken this on the beach. I've taken it in my backyard on an obstacle course. Highly recommend it. It is tons of fun, definitely worth the price. And finally, I wanna talk about 3D printers. Everyone asks me every year, okay, what 3D printer is a good gift to get someone? It's really difficult to say because everyone has their own specific requirements. I do actually have a full video course on purchasing your first 3D printer, which actually breaks down all the different specifications to help you make an informed decision. But in terms of printers I've tested this year, I have to say the Artillery Sidewinder X2 has been my personal favorite. It combines everything I like in a 3D printer in a functional package that worked out of the box for me. So for example, it has the Volcano style hot end, so I can stick a larger nozzle on it because it has that larger 300 by 300 by 400 millimeter print volume. And I like to print larger, faster. It has an AC heated print bed, which heats up really, really quickly, which is critical when you have such a large heated surface for large 3D prints. And the best upgrade from factory from the original X1 is the mesh bed leveling using the BL touch style sensor built into the actual hot end itself. So it's a really nice concise package. It's not the most perfect 3D printer I've ever tested. It does have like some quality issues in terms of the print that you might need to fine tune or do some mods, but it does work out of the box and I've been getting great prints off it. So you can find the review here or a link in the video description if you wanna go check that out. And hey, if you're a maker, then it'd be awesome to share what you think would be a great present for makers in the comments below this video so you can help out others. And if you enjoyed this video here on Makers Muse, maybe consider subscribing because my aim to empower your creativity through technology. And you can find previous year's videos on gift for makers here. Either way, thanks for watching guys, bye.